Alright, if you're thinking about switching over to Linux from Windows or maybe Mac OS, then there are a few things that you should know before you actually make the jump. Now I wanted to make this video because oftentimes you'll read some people on Reddit or some forums complain about how they switched over to Linux for a few months, but then eventually they just went back to Windows for whatever reason. And so I wanted to hopefully save you some time in this video so you don't have to switch to Linux for a few months just to find out that you don't actually like it at all. And so in this video, I wanted to go over who should and who shouldn't use Linux. Surprise, surprise, I don't actually think everybody in the world should use Linux. And I also wanted to go over how to get the most out of your Linux experience once you actually try it. Because I think if you go into the whole experience knowing a little bit more and setting your expectations, you're going to have a much better time than just somebody who tried it on a whim, knew nothing about it beforehand, and just dove in. Now let's start off with the first point, and that is that I don't actually think everybody should be using Linux. So obviously I think Linux is a great desktop operating system. I use it daily, I've been using it for over two years. And I wouldn't be making a video like this if I didn't think that Linux is superior to Mac OS and Windows. But at the same time, I also realize that Linux is not for everyone. So of course, you probably know a lot of the pitfalls of Linux, and that is that a lot of programs are just not supported on Linux at all. So maybe if you absolutely need Adobe products like Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere for your work, especially if you work on a team and you have to send files back and forth, then you can't just completely switch off Adobe. It's not really possible. And although you can sort of emulate them in Linux, uh, let me just tell you, it is really not worth it. So if you absolutely need a program that is only available on Windows or Mac OS, then you may just want to stick with those. Now I will add a disclaimer in that a lot of programs that you might think are essential to your workflow, like before I used Photoshop a lot and I thought that I could never give it up, but after switching to Linux, I also switched to GIMP, which is another photo editing software that is free and has a ton of features, just like Adobe Photoshop. And I'm actually able to get all of the work that I need done in GIMP. And I can also use it professionally, like I create mockups that I can send to clients, I create YouTube thumbnails, everything that I did before in Adobe Photoshop, I can do fine in this Linux program. And so a lot of programs that you like, you might find alternatives that are just as good or even better on Linux. But if you absolutely need some Adobe product or some software that's only available on Windows or Mac OS, then you may just want to stick with those operating systems. Because I don't really recommend dual booting. A lot of people do switch between something like Windows and Linux on the same computer, but I've tried it before and it's not that great of an experience to be honest. You're much better just sticking with one. It's just cumbersome to switch between different operating systems. And of course, if you absolutely need to play AAA multiplayer games, then you should probably also stick to Windows, as a lot of those games will just not work properly on Linux. But a lot of smaller, maybe indie titles will work perfectly. I played a whole bunch of different games on Linux with absolutely no problem. So if any of those describe you, then maybe just stick with whatever operating system you're using now. But Linux is actually going to be a really great experience if maybe you're a programmer. So I think almost any kind of programmer or developer could benefit from switching to Linux. That's what I do actually, I'm a developer and the experience in switching to Linux has just been great because most programs are natively written for Linux and a lot of things will work better than something like Windows. Also, if you do a lot of office work, Linux does have a lot of very good office suites that you can use. And even if you don't like the Linux office suites, you can just use the web-based Microsoft 365 or something like that. So if you fall into either one of those categories, I think Linux is going to be a great choice. So hopefully that helps you actually choose if you do actually want to switch to Linux or not. But I will say, once you are inside the Linux ecosystem, I think the most important thing to keep in mind is just to be open-minded about Linux. So the first thing that you have to know is that Linux is just going to be different from Windows or Mac OS. So think of it as the same sort of experience you would have to go through if you were switching, say, from Windows to Mac OS. You're not going to expect everything to perfectly map over one to one. So you're going to have to learn how to do things in a new way. And maybe some options that you're used to are not going to be there. There's going to be a different way to do it. And one of the biggest mistakes you can make is trying to make your experience exactly a one to one copy of your Windows or Mac OS experience. So that includes using the desktop, you're going to have to learn some new ways to do things inside your desktop environment. 
And I'm also including programs because as I said before, a lot of the programs that are there on Windows or Mac OS are simply not going to exist on Linux. So you are going to have to learn a lot of new programs and you are going to have to be okay with that. If you're so stuck on one particular program that you miss from maybe Windows, then you're probably not going to have a great time. Like I said, you need to be open-minded and open to different alternatives that Linux has. So you're probably going to have to find a new music player, a new text editing software, a new photo editing tool, all kinds of different things like this. And if you're not open to learn new things, then you're not going to have a great time. And like I said before, you can emulate a lot of programs that you might miss on Windows with this program called Wine. And what it does is it basically emulates some programs that you might have on Windows and kind of recreates them for Linux. And I have used this before for different programs that are only available on Windows and it just never works that well. So I'm always running into some bugs or some graphical errors or some issues that just aren't there for the Windows versions. And it's always a major headache trying to get these programs to work. So you're much better off, for example, switching to GIMP over Photoshop. An emulated version of Photoshop is not going to be very fun to use. And in the long run, you will be much better off learning a new program than just sticking with an old emulated piece of software. And just be aware that it'll take a little while to get used to your new operating system. So when you're just switching to Linux for the first time, your productivity might dip a little bit as you're learning how to do everything the new Linux way. But over time, once you get more comfortable with working with Linux, you're going to be just as fast as doing things as on your old operating system. And you'll probably be able to get a lot of things done a lot faster. So every feature that I've ever missed from Windows, I actually found a replacement on Linux that is much better and easier to use. So I actually don't end up missing anything from Windows. And that's just because I came into Linux with an open mind and tried to learn new things and the new way to do them. And so I was actually one of these people who switched to Linux for a few months. And then I just switched back to Windows just because I didn't really like the Linux experience. But once I went back, I tried to be more open minded and give some different programs a shot and actually learn how to do new things in Linux. And only then did I actually get it and finally start to have a good time with Linux. And since that point, I haven't been back to Windows since. And one more thing I want to say is that you should not be afraid of the Linux terminal. So a lot of people are scared of typing things into a terminal. I know it looks kind of scary, a black box where you type in commands. Maybe you think you're not enough of a hacker to actually use the Linux terminal. And so if you're troubleshooting something on a website and they tell you to do something in the terminal, then I would recommend just using the terminal and getting it done. So it might look scary and you might not know a lot of the commands that they're telling you to run, but the more you use these commands and the more you actually use the Linux terminal and get comfortable with it, uh, the easier things are going to get. So I started Linux with no knowledge of the Linux terminal and everything I know now, I just learned online. I would look up some YouTube tutorials on how to do something. And sometimes you would see a tutorial on how to do things the graphical way you would probably click through some settings option in Ubuntu in order to change some setting. But a lot of times editing some system file in your terminal is actually going to be a lot easier than clicking through something in a graphical interface. And once you get more comfortable, you'll find a lot of things to like about the Linux terminal. For example, I think that installing programs is much easier through the Linux terminal than some graphical application. And it's just the first of many great uses that you'll find for the terminal. So don't be scared of it just because you're used to clicking buttons in a user interface. Like I said, Linux is about learning new things and having an open mind and doing things the Linux way. And the terminal is part of that. Now, of course, if you really want to, you can live your entire Linux life without ever opening up the terminal once. But I would urge you to just give it a try and not to be so scared of it. For me, what got me used to it was just actually watching a bunch of YouTube videos on how to do some things in the terminal and just seeing some examples of all these cool things that you can do using the terminal, it really convinced me to learn the terminal a little bit better. And finally, I'll leave this video by recommending you a beginner distro to install because this is one of the most common questions that you'll get in Linux. Which distro should I start with? And so you might have heard of a whole bunch of different Linux beginner distros. You might have heard of Ubuntu, Pop! OS, Mint. And I'm here to say that whatever beginner distro that you've heard of before, is probably going to be a good distro. So all of those ones that I just listed, I recommend. 
Ubuntu, Pop! OS, and Mint are all very good beginner distros to start off with. Some people will say Manjaro is a good beginner distro, but I don't actually recommend that or any other Arch-based distribution, if you know what that means. Another popular one I think right now is Endeavor OS. And so you might have heard that Arch Linux is a lot cooler than something like Ubuntu. And so you might want to do something like that. Of course, you're probably not going to jump into Arch Linux because it's not very beginner friendly at all. But you might think that downloading one of these easy Arch distros like Endeavor OS or Manjaro is going to be the way to go because you get the best of both worlds. However, I don't really recommend this just because these Arch-based distributions are going to be a little less stable than Debian-based distros like Ubuntu, Mint, or Pop! OS. And maybe I'll make a whole video in the future about why I don't think Manjaro is a good beginner distro. But just be aware for now that some things might break and there's not always an easy way to fix that in Arch by just clicking around to some graphical interface. You may have to go in and fix things yourself. And for a beginner distribution, that's probably not something you really want to do. So if you've been running Linux for a few months and you want to try out one of those, uh, go ahead, be my guest, but I would definitely not recommend those as your first distribution to try. And finally, I will say that distribution, it doesn't really matter that much. So don't spend all this time trying to figure out if you should download Ubuntu or Mint and all the different comparisons between these two distributions because it's not going to be that big of a difference, to be honest. And if you don't like it, you can honestly just switch anytime you want to. It is usually going to be very simple to switch between distributions. So once you've heard something good about one distribution, I would just go out and try it. That's going to be my best recommendation to you. And you can just see if you like Linux or not. Now, like I said, I don't really like dual booting, but if you're just trying out Linux for a while and you're not sure that you're going to stick with it, uh, dual boot with Windows and worst case scenario, you can just remove Linux if you don't like it. But once you're more comfortable on Linux and you are sure that you want to stick with it, I would just ditch the dual boot, just uninstall your copy of Windows, just because you're going to be learning much more if you're only on Linux rather than switching between both of these different operating systems. And so of course I'm just going to leave you there. I'm not going to go over how to install your new Linux distribution and all of that other stuff. You're smart, you can go find some other video on how to do that. But hopefully this video will have given you some food for thought, just so you can have a more informed decision if you should switch to Linux before you actually pull the trigger. And hopefully setting your expectations with Linux and being open to learn some new things will help you avoid a lot of the frustration and disappointment that some people have whenever they switch to Linux. And so I think if you go into Linux with the mindset that I told you about in this video, then you're probably going to have a pretty good time. So my best advice from here is just give Linux a try and enjoy.